Now that we've gone through sorting everything that you see here, we're gonna talk about the different categories that personally I have. And again, you're gonna have different categories, but the thought process is the same. You have a limited amount of space in a drawer, unless you take up two drawers for a particular item or category of clothing you have. We wanna make sure that all of this fits nicely in there so it doesn't like get messed up or get cluttery or anything like that and that you can find everything that you have. So <clears throat> the first thing I'm gonna talk about is these are athletic tops that have built-in support for women. Now, again, while I was training for triathlons, I felt, well, I feel amazing right now, but I felt even more amazing and these fit a little bit more snug um, even then because I was training. Now I know from just looking at it that this stack right here is not going to be the ones that I'm going to feel the most confident and comfortable in. So I'm going to put those aside. Now I do have a few and these have a little bit more flow to the tops but still have support in them that I'm pretty confident I will still wear since I've worn a couple of them already and I wanna hang on to these. <clears throat> the next category, doing laundry today, are sports bras. And those I have in a variety of colors, but I keep it simple. I don't have one that matches every outfit. I have one that can coordinate with some pants, some capris, some shorts, some like workout pants that are just more like running around errand wise. I have <clears throat> the all amazing dry fit shirts that slip and slide and go every which direction in your drawer. And then I have my tank top t-shirts that I wear almost on a daily when I work out. These are the shirts that I feel good, I feel happy, um, I feel empowered, and I always walk into the time to take care of myself through exercise feeling like amazing. And I feel like in order to stay consistent with your goals, feeling amazing is a really great place to start. And then the last court category are these um, more like camisoles. And I keep them in this drawer just from a standpoint of space. But the other thing is we all kind of go through some fashion phases. And for a while, I went through a fashion phase where I was very dependent upon camisoles and either cardigans or wraps or blazers or things like that. And so while I don't wanna get rid of all of them, there are a few that I know I'm okay parting with, partly because I haven't worn them in a while and I'm okay with letting them go. So I'll sort those in just a minute. Now, let's talk about folding. There are some amazing YouTube videos out there on how to fold things. I don't know about you, and while I appreciate all of the videos and the cool tricks and the hacks for them, I don't usually have that much time, and I know that with practice I would probably get better and faster at it, but I don't have the time to go through and fold things so they become perfect little cubes. Again, packing for a trip, that might be amazing. So I try to keep things as simple as possible and also where I can see everything and know what print or words or color or style I'm working with. So sports bras are simple. I fold them in half, I lay them flat with all of the straps towards the top and the uh, bands at the bottom, chest area towards the bottom. The second area, <clears throat> are my tank tops that I wear over sports bras. Now I have a lot, and I admit I have a lot. Um, I should probably get rid of some, but <laughs> these are the things that make me happy, right? We have to spark happiness. So tank top, athletic tank tops and, and tank tops that maybe you just store because you have more drawer space than a hanging space in your closet that is a little bit nicer tank top should be stored in one of two ways. If you have the ability to fold them, so we fold them in half from top to bottom, and then we fold them like this and lay them flat. This will allow you to know every color and it'll keep each of the designs accessible if there happens to be one. Now I like things, and you'll notice this in our cooking videos, I like things nice and compact and small. 
So if I can, I actually take it one step further <clears throat> and fold it so it's a nice rectangle. The unfortunate part is I just folded that one opposite of what I normally do because on this particular shirt, silly me, there is blue ribbing on the sides. And so actually what I would do is I would fold it so that is on the outside <clears throat> so that when it's in my drawer, I can see that detail and know exactly what shirt this is. So I'm going to spend a few minutes just folding these shirts and I'll be right back. All right, now we have our two piles of athletic tops that I wear. I've got a stack that are either solid colors or that have a simple print on them. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I have another pile, and this pile has like words, inspirational quotes, or things that um, remind me on my journey. So these are really uh, fun tops and I wear them quite a bit. But you'll notice that every top I'll do it this way. Every top that I look at, I can see the letters, the fonts, and possibly some of the words that are on these shirts. If you folded them inside out and folded them over, you would have to be able to identify the shirt by either the collar or the arm. By folding it this way, you actually know which shirt you're looking for. Same goes for the solid color shirts that may have a little design on them like the first shirt we did. These are all in order, but I can tell color and design which one is gonna work best for my outfit that day. So once we have those two in a pile, <clears throat> one of the biggest questions I get is actually for dry fit shirts. These are tricky. Um, I feel like there's some ways that are perfect to fold. But this one particularly, it's very slippery like most of them. My favorite way to fold these types of shirts is, well, I just did it and I didn't even walk you through it. <laughs> so let me lay it down and I'll walk you through it. So we'll fold, uh, you'll face the shirt down with whatever is printed on the front facing down. You'll fold over into the middle so the shirt is folded into thirds. And if you have longer sleeves on them, you'll just lay them flat over at an angle so that they stay within the shirt. And then you're going to pull the bottom hem up to the top, and then you're going to bring that folded seam up as well. And what that's going to allow you to do is have a shirt that is perfectly folded. You'll be able to see the design on the front to determine whether it's the one you wanna wear. And more importantly, because it's a dry fit shirt and it's a little uh, wiggly, if you will, by keeping them about this size or the size once you are able to fold them, they won't slide around as much in your drawer. There have been suggestions, like I said, on other videos in which rolling them or turning them into a beautiful like origami envelope will keep them. Um, but again, I don't have time to do that. So this is a quick and effective way to fold those dry fit shirts to make sure they stay and they don't slide around in your drawer. I'm gonna go ahead and fold this shirt and sort through that pile and then we will walk through putting them in the drawer. Quick interruption. I wanted to make sure that if you have these type of athletic tops that have built-in support, that you understand there is a pretty cool way to fold them to keep everything in place. Just like we did with the tank tops, let's start there. <clears throat> You're going to fold the top at halfway. So we're gonna lay it down. We're gonna fold it halfway instead of thirds because I forgot what I was doing. And then what we're gonna do is fold that in half and that in half. Again, we're going down to a nice manageable square or rectangle stack 
that will allow you to save space in your drawers, but it will also keep from the tangling of um, the support that's built into the tops. All right, I'm gonna keep folding and I'll see you in a second. Now that we're all done with that, I wanna take a minute and tell you the importance of consistency. Consistency in folding, just like in everything else, is what is going to allow you to keep your closets, your drawers, your kids' drawers completely organized and chaos free. Now, you'll notice I folded my tank tops so I could see the letters, I folded the ones with images or that were solid the same way just to allow me to see the color. I folded my athletic tops that have support in them one way so they stay in a nice neat pile and I can see all the colors. I've got my dry fit shirts that are flat but they won't slide around. And then I do have a few camisoles that I did hang on to. And like I said, I've moved some stuff around in my drawers um, in which they might find a new home because uh, we're doing a little downsizing and purging while we're all stuck at home. And so for right now, I'm gonna put them in this drawer and then later I'll probably move them around. These are the items off to the side that I've decided to upcycle and give them new life with somebody else. The important thing to remember about all organization is making sure that you have the space for your inventory. So I'm gonna move the camera real quick and we're gonna take a sneak peek at how we're putting it all in the drawer. Now it's time to take our organized inventory and put it back in our drawer. Now remember, we have taken and broken all of the athletic tops into categories, but we have also consistently folded them so they're easy to find and they stay in perfectly neat piles in the drawer. Give us just a few seconds and we'll go ahead and load it up and show you the final reveal. All right, now here is our final reveal. Thanks for hanging out with us today. We hope that you learned some tips and tricks about organizing your dresser drawers. We hope that you will join us for our next organizing video. Take care.